my clothes were actually burned to ashes. My hair like became crisp, my eyebrow crisp. It was around 1 a.m. in the morning and I smelled gas from my room. So I came down, I went to the kitchen. I was trying to make sure that the knob of the stove is properly shut. Suddenly there was a spark, an explosion happened. I could see things melting before my eyes, plates smashing and there was like a huge hole at the top of where the gas stove used to be. I was flung backwards and there was like a strange colour on my skin, you know, which I've never seen before. It's like white but red. I remember the doctor was telling me that I'll be in a coma for a few months because you'll be in a lot of pain. I can't remember anything. And it was just like nightmares upon nightmares while I was in coma. I was in the ICU for nearly four months. I, I couldn't talk, I couldn't speak. I was immobile because I, I had muscle atrophy. The body has not been moving, so the muscle is very weak. I couldn't even move left or right. The biggest challenge I had was mobility because I was not able to move for a very long time. I remember the first time when uh, they asked me to stand. I think it took around uh, three physiotherapists. That was, I think, more than seven or eight months. When I first stand, it was like so painful, you know. I felt like blood was like coming out from my bandage. It took me around more than one and a half years, nearly two years before my walking gets better. I was in the hospital officially for one year, three months and 20 days. At that point of time, that was my lowest point in life because people have to take care of me. I can't go to the toilet, they have to change my pampers. I can't even move at all. At that time, I felt like an, like an object, you know. I, I had this fear too that will I be dependent on other people for the rest of my life? I, I've screamed before, I've cried before. I did wonder, you know, why is this hap thing happening? But my view of life has changed. Now I am more accepting of what has happened. One of the things that I regretted is uh, spending too much time at work. Sometimes my friends will be inviting me, hey, you know, I'm going for holiday, Bali or something, you know, come and join me. So I'll be thinking I should concentrate more on what is important and I should have had a more balanced life. If you have not spent enough quality time to do what you want to do, it is of no use at the end of the day. Just because we don't hear about explosion or people being burned, that it didn't happen. If you look at the World Health Organization uh, statistic, in 2018, two-thirds of the burned survivors actually came from African and Southeast Asia region. Most of the time, at the burn ward, I see people who are burned by uh, hot water or hot oil. Because these are basically a normal everyday activity. And also there are some who have got burned because of uh, burning rubbish, attacked by acid. You can never be too safe because uh, in a blink of an eye, anything can happen. I have 80% uh, total burn area. The areas were around second to third degree burn. First degree is more of like a superficial burn. So the most painful is the second degree burn, which I had the most of it. It is near your pain receptors. It can also affect your sweat glands. Third degree is when it is even after the dermis. Prior to this incident, I do not know anything about burns because that is a subject that was no concern for me. I think as with any society, we need to be more compassionate towards people of all types of difficulties whether they are disabled or whether they have been burned. Even if you watch uh, television, there is a stigma. People who have been burned are often portrayed as the bad guys. And I feel it is important for schools at least to educate the children about what you need to do if this thing happens. Because it may save lives. In the future, if you smell like uh, gas leaking at your home, the best thing you can do is open all the windows and try not to turn any lights on because when you switch on the light, it may trigger the spark. When you approach the gas stove, make sure that you uh, take out the head regulator out. And uh, if you feel unsafe, just get out from the house and call the bomba. I knew that I was really lucky to be alive. What helped me that uh, to get through is having hope. 
knowing that my parents are still alive, my sister is there for me. This is my second chance in life and I feel that I should not waste it, that I should try to do something about it. I want to build a burn support group in Malaysia, even if it's a small group. At least if there are other burn survivors who are going through this, I can tell them that they are going to be okay, that I've gone through it myself too. I think this is what any burn survivors will want to hear when they are at the hospital or at the ICU. They can't see whether they have a future anymore. I just want to tell them that they do have a future and that the most important thing right now is for them to heal themselves first. As what I see in our Asian market, there is no book that I know of written in English about burn survivors. I'm uh, currently writing a memoir of my journey as a burn survivor. It is indeed a miracle that I'm still alive. Hi, I'm Eileen from Malaysia and I am the Asian woman.